Up in the ring, Boyd Pierce is ready to introduce this event to you, so we'll spring up there and pick him up. This event, two out of three fall, 45 minute time limit. In the white corner, James J. Dillon presents the world's strongest man at 300 pounds, Kim Patera. 220 pounds from the Fiji Island in the white corner, we welcome back to Houston, popular Jimmy Snuka. Your referee, Danny McShane. So, Jimmy Snuka, the Fijian flyer, a guy who can whiz around through the air in great fashion and who is a, is the man that you see leaping off the top rope every time you see Houston wrestling on Channel 39. You see him on the opening of our program as he uh, whips through the air and lands on his opponent. He hopes to be able to do that to Ken Patera here tonight. Jimmy Snooker, a born in Fiji, raised in the uh, Solomon Islands, and then later to Hawaii, where he became interested in bodybuilding, and now a name to be reckoned with in the professional wrestling field. The noise you hear in the background is he coming from people as Ken Patera tries to divest himself of his magnificent brocaded wrestling pants. Well, he finally managed to get partly through the operation that time. This match now for two out of three falls and Ken Patera, the world's strongest man, but I want to tell you, when it comes to strength, Jimmy Snuka is not exactly uh, deficient. Those muscles that he has were uh, started with the simple things in life, like rowing an outrigger, fishing, climbing coconut trees, and in games of uh, skill with the other people in his village. He is no stranger to athletic action of all kinds, and you can tell from the size of his arms, which match those of Patero, who uh, is the first man in this country to lift 500 pounds over his head in competition. Why, well, you, you know that he had to take a lot of work to get the, those arms in that shape. So Patera eyes Jimmy Snooker, and Snooker is up there and ready to match him. Patera is tough. He's got his manager, James J. Dillon, in the corner, and here we have the spectacle of two guys who are trying to outdo each other in the infighting, in the business of getting close and using the referee's hold and jerking a man around. Here comes Patera. Snooker trying to outbalance him. Look at the way that guy can jump. Tremendous. And he get him with a cross body block. There's one, two, and... Jimmy Snooker reverting to the tribal instincts, and there comes Dylan racing around to give advice to Ken Patera. So Snooker flew through the air that time and found his target and really brought this crowd up to its feet. There's Jimmy. Now this is Jimmy's first appearance in Texas in about two years right now and he has hit the high spots. He has wrestled up and down the East Coast and made a tremendous hit. Patera, he tries to keep from being shown up by the strength of Snooker because he features strength and is proud of it. Look at the, look at the leap of that man. I'll be doggone. Jimmy Snooker with a classic pose comes around to slam into Ken Patera. 
So Dylan out there commiserates with his strongman and calls for timeout. I don't think he's going to find timeout waiting for him here. Listen to these fans here as they suddenly turn the Coliseum into a place of uproar to back Jimmy Snuka. And Snuka now has learned to move with measured tread, and yet when he slips out of that steady, studied pace, he suddenly becomes a speed demon, and that's what counts. It isn't how fast you move between holes, it's how fast you move when you're applying them. Snooking out with the side headlock. And he grabs the blonde head of Patera to do something with it. And Snuka is hanging on well. Look at the size of that arm. And Patera, who threw Snuka far and wide, was bragging about it that time when he was suddenly struck. Jimmy landed on his feet. Beautiful move by, by Snooker. Well balanced. So hanging on with the side headlock is Snooker. And Jimmy puts Ken Patera in problem territory as Dylan moves up and down now with with that worried look on his face and scratching his head thinking he's going to find the answer to it. So Patera, strength and all, is in, in trouble as that big arm keeps putting the squeeze to his head. Enough of those and you can hear the bees buzz. Now you see him jerking that head around and jerking that arm around and in good fashion. He's got an arm that fits around there perfectly without any wasted effort. And there goes Snooker. And he takes him over beautifully. And this crowd here lets him know it. They're Snooker fans, and they always have been. During the time that he's been away from Texas, and in spite of the fact that he has been doing so very well on the East Coast, fans have been asking for him to come back here where he made a great hit and where he is making a great hit again. And again, he comes with that edge of the hand blow and applies it nicely. Snooker. Good, solid side headlock. Dylan, every time that arm goes whipping around the head, he has a tizzy over there, just trying to figure out what sort of advice he can give Ken Patera that's going to keep him out of trouble. Patera now trying to put a bear hug in there. He's trying to look get that spot just underneath the ribs and between the ribs and the hip and to cinch in on it if he possibly can. He was over to the side that time, but now he's lost that advantage and he is expecting the hole to be broken by the referee. He timed it right. He was ready immediately. Ken Patera laying in that big fist of his, and big fist is what he's got. And Patera moves in solidly, clamps down on top of Snooker's head, pushes his throat against that rope, 
and uses the rope to, to strangle him. So Snooker's having his problems. Close up of the action as Patera that time got in there with that driving knee of his against Jimmy Snooker's ear. And now the Fijians in trouble because prolonged punishment of the type that a man as strong as Patera is, can deliver can only blast you apart and upset all your intentions. And Jimmy Snooker got a delay that time, but here he goes Patera for a back body drop and oh man, on top is Patera. And there's enough strength left in Snooker for him to work his way out from underneath. Reverse chin lock. Snooker hangs on. Snooker's got the head. Snooker's got the those powerful arms of his up in close. And he can use, look at the size of the forearms with relation to the size of, of Snooker's head, and you get some idea what we're talking about. But Tara is a hard-working athlete, a man who trains constantly. Ten minutes have gone by. This is a two out of three fall match. There have been no falls as yet. We saw the hair pulling, but the referee was at a different angle and he was unable to see it. And of course, that's what the, what uh, Patera was trying to do is create that sort of a situation. Reverse chin lock. And Snooker's in trouble but he was in trouble before and he has managed to survive it. So as the hold starts to take its effect, Danny McShane checks that arm. If the arm had fallen again, he would have stopped the fall right there and given it to Patera. But uh, Snooker straightened out that arm to let him know that there was still consciousness and still plenty of um, strength left. And Patera tries to fight off the efforts of Snooker to give him trouble. There is the escape, and here's Patera going for a tackle, but it didn't. Oh, look at the way that man can roll. Oh, 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 oh. He bounced in there and came down, and now we've got Ken Patera going for a dive. And dive it is with a rabbit punch at the end. And Jimmy Snooker's now going to face his toughest decision. If he can get out of it, he will. No, he did not stay in it. He got out of it. And Dylan on the outside looks disgusted almost as much as to say, how much does it take to get this man from to quit? And I'll tell you, any normal individual would have quit just about that point and have quit with honor. Snooker. He's, he's throwing forearm blows. He's throwing edge of the hand blows tonight. And he's throwing wallops with his fist, which is quite a varied assortment. And now the tide is turning, but whether he hit him with a beautiful reverse chop that time, and you can see what happened to Patera. He hit him in the head, but he landed with a thud on his brain that time, and it stunned him. <laughs> Snooker into the ropes. And this time it's Snooker who hits and, and hits hard. 
And again, he comes with that body block. But it's uh, Patera on top and... But there, and the chain got the count that time. Holy cow. Jimmy Snooker hit Patera high. They rolled completely over. They came down, and Snooker was underneath. Patera's legs were high up in the air on the, on the ropes. The referee dove for the shoulders and was concentrating on counting the shoulders down, and that prevented him from seeing it. He is not getting any straight answers from Jimmy Dillon. You can bet your boots on that. And Dillon is trying to talk his way out of it. So, back here in a moment. Right now we pause for this word from the studio. Now the second fall starts and the crowd has not yet stopped hollering about the first fall. And Jimmy Snooker now is aware, more aware of what happened to him than ever. He has started after the world's strongest man, Ken Patera. But when you start following Ken, you've got to be careful. He's strong from his head to his toes but look at Jimmy Snooker now as he comes in with his best weapons and that's one of them that driving crashing wallop with the head Patera into the ropes of Douglas and oh how he landed what a crashing fall and Snooker slams him down and looks for the opportunity to to dive head first into Ken Patera, and he look, there's Snooker. He's looking around at that crowd, and they're screaming for him to give Ken Patera another one. He does, and much in the same fashion with that wild driving headbutt of his. McChain got a two count that time, but not a three count, and that's what the crowd's looking for. It's um, Patera being lifted by the Fijian, Jimmy Snooker, and Patera caught a beauty that time. Right smack between the eyes. Snooker trying now to use that rope as in the same manner that Patera used it in the first fall, and that it is to use it to choke. Man down, Patera, this could be a fall, but there goes a foot over the rope. And this time, Patera's foot on the rope saves him again. Before, it, it actually gave him a fall. And in, now, as he gets that foot up there, it keeps him from being pinned and losing a fall. So Ken Patera gets an opportunity in behind. He's going for the full Nelson. This is the hole that he has used with devastating effectiveness here. And a hole that is capable of working a man's neck. Patera knows it. So does Snooker. Snooker has a powerful neck. But I'll tell you, it's difficult to, under ordinary circumstances, to fight off a full Nelson much less to fight it off when it's being applied by the world's strongest man. So McShane looks, but the hold is legal, and Snooker's head is going down on his, on his chest. Screaming to Jimmy Snooker, trying to encourage him to manipulate his way out of this hold if he can't actually strong arm his way out. 
He got out of it, but whether it cost him to get out of it also remains to be seen. Patera going, well, I was going to say he would move in to follow up with that hold again if he could. Crotch, lift, and slam, and here comes Patera. Look, he looked for it, but he didn't find it. He was looking to chop his head off, and it didn't quite work out that way. Snooker stepping in to do the belting. And he swung around there with a hard driving foot. Yes, barefooted. But I'll tell you, those feet of his are just as solid as if he was wearing army boots. And again, comes Snooker. And now Snooker has come to life. And here he is with the slap dance and maneuvering in there to show these fans what he means. Oh, 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 oh. He went flying through the air that time, and Patera just drew those knees up in self-defense. And here's the fall. There's one, there's two. And Danny McShane spotted the foot on the rope this time, and there is no fall. There is no fall. And here is Snooker going flying. There goes Jim Dillon. We got, we've got a fall. We've got a fall as Jimmy Snooker wraps him up in a small package and puts him down onto that canvas and keeps him there. Jimmy Snooker. Has equalized falls. Jimmy Dillon is still belly aching about what has happened. And Ken Patera has lost this fall to Jimmy Snooker, the flying Fijian. We'll be back here in a moment. We'll have more action for you after we have this word from the studio. The final fall, the third and final fall. Patera took the first one. Snooker is still exulting for having equalized things, and the fans have exulted with him during this brief intermission between falls. And now, with the world's strongest man facing a man who has proven that he can put his shoulders down to that canvas, why, this is the all-important one. Patera, he's got a solid arm. I'll tell you, when he hits you there with that well-muscled arm, it's like slamming you with a two-by-four. Patera now, trying to wear Snooker down. Snooker, looking for the opening, finding it. He's going for the knee drop, and he hits that atomic drop, and down goes Ken Patera. Here is Snooker stepping in for the equalizer as he starts pounding away. He's got the he, he's got the stuff. He got ripped across the face that time by by Ken Patera. Patera came across there with the forearm, the wrist and the fingers of his hand in, in the direction of the eyes and he ripped it right across there. This could be it. On top is Ken Patera, but you gotta stay there. When you can stay there and that count comes to three, you're, you're with it. Bear hug. Patera putting it on Jimmy Snooker, laying it in there. Terra now, as he comes around from the side, he tries to get that bear hug so that he's underneath the ribs of, um, of Snuka. And Snuka is shaking that head of his and saying, no, he's not going to quit because Danny McShane is popping the question to him. And when you say bear hug, you got a man that's built like a bear applying that hold. Notice how he shortens those, those arms, reaches up his own arm to grab himself above the wrist and to pull that arm in there close and tight. And this time Snooker gave Patera a taste of his own medicine.
Lang Mayer, and on top is Jimmy Snooker. And again, when he shoots that head forward, he doesn't miss. Patera looking now to, whoa, and as Patera come in, over the top they go, and a hard fall. They both went over that top rope, and there, that is a difficult way to, to land. Neither man had control over his own fate that time as, as, as he came, came by, and, and Dylan is trying to push uh, Patera in there, but Patera hasn't made it yet. And Snooker starts after James J. Dillon and has, a, has him on the floor. And we've got the action swelling to the outside of the ring as Snooker goes after him. And here is, is Patera, who is doing the chasing. And the action continues long and, and hard against the... against both of them. The bell has sounded, and J Ken Patera got back into the ring, and the... I haven't heard an announcement from the... Four minutes, 45 seconds. Both men counted And it's both men. Both men counted outside the ring, and Irish Danny McShane calls this match a draw. Patera got back in the ring first, but the fact that he got into the into the ring first is um, not uh, evidence of winning. He was not in before the count of 20. We'll be back here in a moment. We'll have more action for you after we have this word from the studio.